Good day, YouTube. My name is Dan, and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, I want to talk to you about the blockchain project Eternity. Eternity has been a popular request from our community, so I'm finally getting around to it. I do apologize for the delay. We have a massive backlog of requests at the moment. We have about currently 50 coins in our waitlist for requested review. So I'm doing my best to get through them, and your patience is most appreciated. Eternity will also be our last platform review for a little while. I feel that we've been reviewing a lot of platforms and protocols recently, and there have been a lot of new promising coins on the market that are actually utility tokens. So I want to focus on utility tokens for the next couple of weeks. The main difference in the review for utility tokens versus platforms like Eternity is that when we review a platform like Eternity, we focus a lot on explaining the technology behind the project because that's where the fundamentals of the project is. But with a utility token, we will focus more on the unique features or services that they offer because that's where the fundamental value of the project is. Nonetheless, these are all great upcoming blockchain projects for us to be aware of, so definitely make sure you follow us for the next couple of weeks so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming utility reviews. Without further ado, we will now review Eternity, a blockchain platform that describes itself as scalable smart contracts interfacing with real-world data. To learn more about Eternity, keep watching this video. There are many blockchain platforms out there, for example, Ethereum, NEO, Cardano, EOS, Tron, and more. Each of these blockchain platforms have their own unique technological features that make them different from the others. Eternity has three main unique features that makes it special as a blockchain platform. If you understand these three features, you understand Eternity. In a classical blockchain, the dApp or decentralized application is built on the blockchain and any transaction that happens on the dApp is done by the blockchain using the computational power of the blockchain. This is very burdensome on the blockchain and can slow down the entire blockchain over time. Examples of classic blockchains are Bitcoin and Ethereum and both of these blockchains are currently running into problems with scaling. Problems with scaling means that as more dApps are built on the blockchain, the blockchain is unable to keep up with the computational demand and the performance of every dApp begins to suffer. A newer blockchain model that we've seen a lot of recently is the use of sidechains. Here the dApp is not built on the blockchain but on top of the blockchain and every sidechain has its own technology and economy and the transactions are done on the sidechain so that it doesn't burden the blockchain. Only the results of the transactions are recorded on the blockchain so it's not burdensome at all and this is a great solution for scalability currently. Examples of current projects that use sidechains include EOS and Loom. Now, Eternity uses another off-chain solution similar to sidechains but not exactly the same and it's called state channels. A state channel is like a side road, so the main dApp is built on the blockchain like the classical model. However, the transaction is not done on the blockchain but off the blockchain on the state channel. Similar to sidechains then, it is only the result of the transaction that gets recorded onto the blockchain if needed and is hardly burdensome on the blockchain at all. This processing of transactions on the channel not only allows scalability, it also allows for privacy. So businesses who want to keep the transactions private, it's possible to hide the transactions on the channel and keep it private. It's very hard to do that with a public blockchain like Bitcoin or Ethereum. The record of the transaction would still be available on the blockchain if it's needed, for example, if there was a disagreement, but the details of the transaction will still be kept private in that situation. The main difference between sidechains and state channels is that sidechains have a lot of flexibility in their design, meaning that every sidechain can have a different consensus mechanism, etc. However, in a state channel like Eternity, because the dApps are built on the blockchain, the dApps are bounded by the mechanics of the blockchain, meaning that they must have the same consensus algorithm as the blockchain, etc. The good thing about being bounded is that whatever benefits the blockchain has from its core design, the dApps will also have those benefits. So basically, any scalability solutions like sidechains or state channels are definitely better than the classical blockchain um, design. However, if you were to compare between sidechains and state channels, there isn't a definite better model. It will come down to each individual project and which design works better for the needs of that project. 
If you've been around the blockchain scene for a while, you would have heard of Lightning Network. Lightning Network is the proposed scalability solution for Bitcoin. Some of you who are familiar with Lightning might think State Channel sounds very similar to Lightning and you would be right. Lightning uses channels to do transfers. You have to remember that Bitcoin was the first generation blockchain that existed way before Ethereum. Smart contracts only came into being with Ethereum as the second generation blockchain. So smart contracts are the core building blocks for blockchain these days. However, Bitcoin as the first generation doesn't use smart contracts. And so Lightning, which was developed for Bitcoin scalability, only facilitates faster transfers. It doesn't facilitate smart contracts. State Channels is the improved version of the Lightning network that allows for faster processing of smart contracts on the channel. Now, one thing that I've not seen mentioned in any review of Eternity yet is the mention that in their white paper, it is stated that Eternity's blockchain architecture is actually set up to be sharding compatible. Sharding is basically partitioning of information and sharding can happen at many layers. In the case of Eternity, it's, it's set up to happen at the nodal la layer. In a classic blockchain, all nodes on the system will have a full record of every transaction. This results in a very chunky and slow system. In Eternity, sharding of the nodes is possible. So what this means is that not all the nodes will have to have a full copy of every transaction record, but rather a single transaction record is split into small shards that is then stored across many nodes. So it's still decentralized, but it's not burdensome. In such a way, the burden of storage and processing of the whole um, system is greatly reduced. So both state channels and the potential for sharding is the first key of Eternity that allows scalability. The second key feature of the Eternity project is the decentralized Oracle. An Oracle is basically a gateway between the blockchain technology and the outside world. Blockchains run on smart contracts. An example of a very simple smart contract would be the contract where you look mow my lawn and I will pay you $50. For the smart contract to automatically execute this transaction, which is what smart contracts do, they automatically execute transactions. The smart contract has to first receive information of when you finish mowing the lawn. That information is dynamic, meaning that it's not set on the blockchain, it's information that is outside of the blockchain that the system has to actively collect to obtain. An Oracle is that system that collects real world data for smart contracts input. Typical oracles are a single point of information, meaning you could tell the smart contract that you have finished mowing the lawn. That is a single point of information and that would trigger the traditional smart contract. However, a single source of information may not be accurate because you may lie and you may report that you've mowed my lawn when you really only mowed half my lawn. So in order to ensure accurate data or collection of data, Eternity's Oracle takes a decentralized approach to ensure the accuracy or truth of the data. The way it works is that any input offered to the Oracle has to be accompanied by a deposit of tokens. A set time is then set up for the information to be confirmed or challenged. If a challenge is issued, the challenge can be launched, but the challenge must also be accompanied by the same deposit amount of tokens. At the end of the set time, if no one challenges the data, the Oracle accepts the input as true. If, however, there is a challenge, then the data will go through a bigger consensus mechanism to achieve consensus, which is more expensive but is safer for quality. Eternity uses two consensus algorithms. It's a hybrid model of proof of work and proof of stake. The proof of work that they use is actually a very unique proof of work that is known as the cuckoo cycle proof of work. Now, traditional proof of work used by blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum at the moment relies on computational power. And this uses a lot of electricity. And it also means that strong ASIC mining chips that boost computational power give a better return. However, the cuckoo cycle proof of work is very different because it relies not on computational power, but on latency. This means a few important things for us. Firstly, it means that there is less electricity used and wasted. Secondly, because it is not computational power determined, but latency, 
any device, even mobile phones, can be used to mine on equal grounds because the latency is the same. Thirdly, because it's not computational power determined, it becomes ASIC resistant. Okay, what do I mean by that? ASIC chips are currently the world's strongest mining chips for traditional proof of work. And so as a result, Bitcoin's mining, instead of being a decentralized process, is fast becoming a monopolized process that uh, is monopolized by ASIC chips users. But this problem will not happen with Eternity. Also, by promoting individual minings, uh, Eternity will basically do away with the need for mining pools, which again are a source of centralization because individuals just with their mobile phones will have a fair go at mining. Proof of work here will be used to produce new blocks. In other words, the new tokens that will be created into the system will be minted or created into the system through the proof of work process. The proof of stake that they use is not used in the block creation, but it's actually used in their rather unique governance structure. Eternity uses an on-chain governance to delegated voting. When we talk about governance in blockchain platforms, it, we're talking about the um, authority to make decisions regarding the technology or the technological updates of the platform. In the past, when a big system upgrade needs to be done, there is no clearly defined manual on how to do it and this often resulted in big differences in opinion over the projects and sometimes the difference in opinion got so um so different that it eventually led to what is known as hard forks and that's how ethereum split into ethereum and ethereum classing over the dao incident now, any Eternity token holders can participate in the governance, meaning you and I can be part of the governance. The way we do it is by voting on the decision and the weight of our decision or of our vote is weighted by the amount of tokens that we hold. So then that's called proof of stake. This governance model is used to make decisions of everything, including the size of the blocks, etc. And if I was to summarize, this whole model of governance is basically a democratization of blockchain governance. This form of governance avoids controversial hard forks and they can even help to prevent forks from happening in the first place because changes then don't need to be done in big batches like Ethereum. In Ethereum, if you have one or two changes, they don't implement it immediately. They consolidate a whole batch of changes and then they launch a big update at the same time. But with this form of governance that Eternity is using, um, updates can happen in smaller portions. So even individual changes can happen. So it's a series of small upgrades rather than a big fork. One point of consideration I will raise up here is that whilst I really like the idea of a decentralized governance and the fact that decentralized governance will promote ownership of the project at the community level, I'm not really sure about how I feel about the fate of big technological decisions being in the hands of lay investors like you and me. Would you know how to make the best decision about block size or forking options? Because I don't. So personally, I would rather leave it to the experts actually. But well, we will have to wait and see how this plays out for this project in the future. One last thing to cover about the tech is that Eternity will support not one, but three virtual machines. So this is unusual because most platforms only have one virtual machine. They will firstly have a version of the Ethereum virtual machine that will make it easy for Ethereum devs to swap over to them, also for programmers who are familiar with Solidity to use Eternity platform. Ethereum uses Solidity, which is a very unique programming language for Ethereum, but it, Ethereum is currently also the world's biggest DAP platform, so it makes a lot of sense to be compatible to be Ethereum. Secondly, they will also have a functional type wadded virtual machine. Um, this is a virtual machine that will support or prefers Vana, which is a functional language similar to Bitcoin script language. Thirdly, they will have what is known as the high level machine, which supports more advanced languages like Chalang. Some of the other main programming languages that the project will support will include Erlang, Elixir, C++, Python, JS, and more. So basically, it's quite an easy platform for most developers to use. Eternity will also be targeting mobile apps. So developers who use Eternity will find it very easy to build mobile apps, which is a big advantage in this day and age. In fact, I was surprised when I came across this point that not many other platforms boast of this feature. Not only will they build mobile apps, 
they will also have a mobile mining feature uh, in the future and that will be huge. The only other project in the space at the moment that does mobile mining is Electronium. And Electronium is not even real mobile mining, it's just mock mobile mining. And even that mock mobile mining attracted over 100,000 users in just a couple of months. So imagine what being the first and only real mobile mining project would do for Eternity. Currently, the only partnership I know for Eternity is with a company that's called Erlang Solutions. And the Eternity um, team's resume also has many Erlang developers on their team. So effectively, they will be the go-to platform for Erlang developers who are keen to build a blockchain dev. And that's an overview of the Eternity technology. One thing I just want to mention about this project that I like is that towards the end of their white paper, they write these words. Eternity is not a catch-all solution for decentralized applications. It should rather be viewed as a synergistic complement to existing technologies. In other words, Eternity technology will appeal to certain users out there. For example, developers who want to develop apps for prediction markets, event contracts, insurance, crowdfunding, etc. But there will also be certain use cases that the technology um, will struggle with, for example, depths that require a high degree of customization. And Eternity here is very open in acknowledging that they are good for certain aspects, but not so good for other aspects. And I think that this can be said of any blockchain protocol out there. There is no one size fits all. I feel much safer investing in a project that knows its limits rather than a blockchain project that promises to be all things to all depths. I believe that the future of protocols is specialization because if you were a developer wanting to build a dApp, all other factors even, would you rather choose a generalized platform with no specific features for your use case or would you choose a specialized platform that has specific features tailored for your needs? Everyone would rather choose the specialized platforms and furthermore specialized platforms means that they will build a unique ecosystem of other projects that are going to be related to your project. So that means more interaction and more business. So I think everyone moving forward, developers will, and companies will be looking for specialized platforms. So I think that in the future, we will see more and more specialized platforms like Eternity popping up and less and less generalized platforms like Ethereum. As token investors, we all want to know whether or not there will be token use for the AE token because token use is where the demand and value for the token comes, which is where our returns as investors come from. In this case, because the dApps are built on the blockchain, it's easy to have sufficient token use. The AE token will be used as gas for all smart contracts and that alone will be enough. Because if AE then has 3 dApps, the potential use case of their tokens would go up 3 times. If they have 10 dApps, 10 times and so forth. This is for any platform that um, has dApps that are built on the blockchain like Ethereum, etc. This is not the same for sidechain projects like EOS though. Okay. Now if we look at the a project where dApps are built on the blockchain like Eternity or Ethereum, just consider Ethereum for example. Gas fees are currently the main source of value for the demand for Ethereum and Ethereum has a market cap of 800 million. Okay? And it will be the same for Eternity, just simply the gas for smart contracts would be enough use case for the tokens. But furthermore, beyond that, Eternity is also used in both the decentralized Oracle as well as the voting governance. So there is a lot of use case and demand for the currency. It's a good model. This is their team. It's a very big team as you can see. I think they currently have 44 employees and are growing. It's also a very tech heavy team. Over 75% of their team members are developers and that probably explains why the team is so outstanding in its technology but really has very little uh, marketing presence. The founder and anchorman for this project is Yenislav Manahov who is the self-proclaimed godfather of Ethereum. It is known that he worked with Vitalik back in the days before Ethereum was even known as Ethereum. However, little more is known of his history because there is no LinkedIn profile or any other resume that I could find. Marion Vojo is the director of the project. She has a LinkedIn account link and her career there stated that she started as a management trainee in Porsche in 2011 to 2012. 
She was then a junior marketing project manager for the Bavarian U.S. Offices of Economic Development from 2014 to 2015. She completed her MBA in marketing from Hof in 2016, and then she joined Eternity in the same year. You can go through the rest of the team in your own time. I was quite disappointed to find that more than half of them didn't have LinkedIn profiles or any resume link. And there is a brief spill on them on the actual website, but the brief, uh, very short paragraph is not very informative at all. For example, even their CEO, besides the title of a self-proclaimed godfather of Ethereum, there is no information about him or his previous employment or startups, etc. I'm sure there is more to his resume and the whole team's resume. I'm sure they have a lot of success and experience, but the information is simply not available. One thing to quickly mention with regards to their team is that a while ago, there was a brief scandal when an ex-technical lead by the name of Zach Hess wrote a rather strong accusatory post against Eternity about not being paid or treated fairly. He has since left and started his own blockchain project called Amovio. Eternity did give a brief reply on Reddit, which was very polite and civil. The matter has since not been heard of. Some people think poorly because of Eternity because of this, but I think that actually no one knows the truth or the actual outcome and it's best not to judge if we don't know the facts. After Zach has left, Eternity then had a temporary CTO by the name of Joel Raymond, who also left the team because an agreement couldn't be reached for him to stay full-time, and then he started his own blockchain project that is known as Emotic. But this time, the parting was on good terms, so it wasn't a bad reflection on the project, as I've read in some places while doing my research that some places were saying that this reflected badly on the project. It doesn't reflect badly because he actually left on good terms. So I mentioned these two cases because if you're new to Eternity like me, and you were to read up on them, you will definitely come across these articles just as I have. And I just wanted to say from a very neutral point of view, after reading every article and post that I could find on these issues, I don't think it pitches badly against their team. In fact, I think their reply to Hess was very fair and thoughtful. This is the roadmap for the project. It's a recently updated roadmap. And until recently, the timeline for their mainnet launch was actually in the second quarter of 2018, which is this month. However, um, June this month, but they have changed it to August of 2018. I was a little bit disappointed that even though they updated their roadmap recently, the updated roadmap didn't go beyond August 2018, which is only another two months away. So that's a very short runtime for an update, but hopefully we will see a bigger time or roadmap update soon. Other recent initiatives by the team that is surprisingly not reflected in their roadmap includes the Starfleet Incubator and Eternity Ventures. Both of these initiatives are designed to provide immense support for new developers on their platform. The support that the project will provide for new developers will include six months of technological, product, marketing, accounting, even legal support. They will support new projects with up to $250,000 funding per startup. That's a quarter of a million dollars. That's a lot of money. They will provide global workspace, mentoring, token sale preparation, and access to a global alumni network. So that's huge. That's a very, very good incubator pro, uh, program. So I think that this is a platform that will be firstly the go-to for all Erlang developers. They will secondly have a very wide range of languages on board. They will be easy for Ethereum dApps to use or cross over. They have great scalability. They have a niche market as well as a very generous and strong incubator program. As a whole package, I must say they are a very attractive competitor for developers in the platform arena. Finally, rounding up with a price uh, prediction. Eternity is currently sitting at $2.51. That's about 50% of their all-time high of $5. Is this a good entry point currently? Yes, it is. But in the recent bear market, every coin is a good entry point. The question is which coin has the best fundamentals for a big bounce back when the market starts to recover and I think that Eternity is kind of poised for that. One thing that is not refer reflected in the graphs is that their current rankings in the market um, is sitting at rank 28. Just over three months ago, Eternity was sitting outside the 100. They weren't even in the top 100 coins. But in just three months, in a very bad market, they have actually climbed their way all the way to the 28th spot on the market. That's impressive. Furthermore, 
with mainnet expected just a couple of months away and mainnet's the biggest news for any um, blockchain platform as well as the fact that they recently launched their starfleet incubator i think the project on the whole right now has pretty good traction compared to other projects in the market and coming approaching august we should see the price rise significantly if they can launch their mainnet by the set date so the short-term price prediction for this project is good in the longer term I think the project is a promising project. The project has state channels with potential sharding and the decentralized Oracle. And I think that's enough unique feature technology for them to stand out amongst the platform crowd. And furthermore, they will also have true mobile phone mining, which we know from Electronium is a massive boost for mass adoption. And they are already the go-to platforms for Golang developers. Last of all, their entire ecosystem has a very healthy token use and demand, which should be an attractive feature to potential token investors. So my conclusion is that I think Eternity is a very good project, guys. Definitely one to keep your eye on. All right, guys, that's my take on Eternity. I hope that you found this review helpful. If you like this review, like this video, give us that like and subscribe. Also, do join our Telegram chat where we have many great discussions like this on up and coming new coins. As I mentioned before, we currently have about 50 coins on the waitlist for review. It's unlikely that I will be able to get to all of them in good and due time. So if you want to know what other coins are on our radar, please make sure to check out our Telegram chat. Finally, as always, none of this is professional advice, so please always do your own homework and make your own decisions. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll be taking a look at a series of utility coins after this for the next two weeks, so make sure you join us for that. Have a great day, guys, wherever you are, and I'll catch you guys again very soon.